Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video I'm going to show you how to get started with the Pernet networking system and sort of your first basic setup for this. So what I have already here is just a very basic example setup. I have a player that can just move around and he can jump. That's about all he does and the setup is really very simple. All I have is just my single player player right here. See so if I open the script, just a normal mono behavior script as you would make it with some basic movement and this will of course be available in the description for you. Now beyond this player I don't really have anything else. I have the environment set up and I just have pre-set up some spawn points but they don't really matter at this point. And of course just the basic camera that doesn't move or anything so it's really as simple as it gets. Just a basic character controller and player and yeah that's it. Now we can move around and hopefully you're familiar enough with Unity to just set that up yourself. So the first thing that we want to do is setting up the scene so it's actually ready for networking. I'm just going to create a new game object here and you can call this network or network manager, whatever you'd like. I'm going to call my network manager and we're going to add the network manager component from Pernet to it. Now two things just happened. Of course we got the network manager component which is expecting some network rules but we also got the UDP transport component which is one of the many transport layers of Pernet. Now, transport layers are essentially what ha handles the actual transferring of data. And you might want different transport for different cases. For example, if you want to work with Steam or if you want it to be in the browser. But the UDP transport is really the default and the fast one. So I would say stick with this for now and then watch the video on transporting if you're interested in that later. Now, for the network rules, this is really a feature specific to Pernet and there's a future video going over that. Um, but for now, I'll just say recommend using the unsafe rules. So you just select the unsafe rules and you continue. Now you can see the network manager has unfolded and it seems like a lot here is going on, but it's actually rather simple. You don't have to do much more. The only other thing that you have to do is to set up your network prefabs. This is essentially a, ref a way to cross-reference objects and the video on spawning and despawning goes into this a little bit more. Now you can see this little new button here, which will essentially just create it for you and populate it for you and you don't have to do anything else. If you do have a prefabs folder already, it'll have put itself in there. And if you don't, it'll just have put itself in the assets folder. And as you can also see in here, the folder name here is essentially where it'll get the game object references from. So in my case, it's inside the prefabs folder. And you can see that it's only grabbing references from the prefab. If you want it from the entire project, you can just drag the assets folder in here. But I'm just going to keep it to the prefabs folder. Now with the network manager set up, you can also see now it says during play mode, this instance will start as a host. If I save the scene and I go to my Peril Sync clone, if you're not familiar with Peril Sync, it's a useful tool to open multiple editors. Now if I go to the clone and I go to the network manager, you can see this will say it will now start as a client. This is because of the automatic flags that we have on the network manager itself. So you can see you can just flag it and say the editor and server build should automatically start as server. And you can see the clones and client builds in the editors as well should start as client. So with this now, this means that when we start, we're now connected. And you can see over here, it says stop server and stop client, which means, you know, we're uh, started on both. You can see we can, I can click them as well to stop. I can click them as well to start as well. So if you'd like, you can just click none here and you'll just automatically be able to start the server manually if you want. It's very easy and handy with just these little edit tools. Now, anyway, continuing on to setting up the player, all we really have to do is there's two things we want to add here. We want to add a network transform, which is what essentially handles the synchronizing of the position and rotation and scale. You can change the settings here if you like, but I'm just going to keep them default. And then I also want to add what's called a network ownership toggle component. Now this essentially allows us to, without even having to edit the script, change how ownership of objects will work. So if I now drag the player movement uh, down here onto the to enable under components, this now means that if we're the owner of the object, the script will be enabled and if we're not the script will be disabled so you really have to see it from the perspective of the owner and that's about it i'll go save the prefab just like that and now we remove it from the scene i have it right here in the prefabs folder so i've already made it a prefab if you don't have it as a prefab you can just drag and drop it into the prefab folder and now from in here all we really have to do is on the network manager as well we can set up a player spawner like so i can just feed it my spawn points you can set up the spawn points however you like i'm just going to put in one i'm going to put in the player prefab as well and save that. and that's it now the network just works if i press play you can see it'll start it'll spawn my player like so and if i go on to my client and i hit start there you go you can see a client spawns as well and things are synchronized they can hit each other they can see each other move around and it's really as easy as that you can see it here how it synchronizes this over here is the client this over here is the server and yeah it's really that easy and yeah the whole idea of this is really to make it very easy to work with you can see more information on them if you'd like on the individual components but really this is all you need for a basic setup synchronizing and stuff in future videos we'll of course get more into the scripting of it and how that works but for now you can see how you can really get started without even needing any coding so yeah hopefully this was helpful to you remember to leave a like comment and subscribe i'm very excited to hear what you think about the system remember to join the pernet discord which will also have its link in the description this is where we'll mainly be supporting pernet users so if you need any help just feel free to leave it in the comments or in the pernet discord and uh, other than that i just hope that you have a wonderful day